getting this thing started, how exactly would you describe what it is that you do and what is the way 126 all about? All right. That's a great question, my dear friend. Yeah. So, you know, starting on someone's journey is always a, a great method because the entry level generally starts with, you know, the human being realizing there's something greater. They have a, an epiphany, they stump their toe, they bang their head, they breathe in, breathe out. Next minute they see apparitions, hear voices. They, you know, they've got this glimpse of what they perceive was reality is now just like no longer the same. Yeah. And so they start looking, they start seeking for something greater. They're like, well, how did that happen? How did I experience this voice in my head or see this image or get a prediction or or uh, uh, talk to my loved ones, or just have a moment where I'm just blissful and calm. And so then they start looking around to find answers. And generally, Taoism is a great uh, path for that and has had sort of a, a reinforcing and fortified sort of pathway over many thousands of years that give people a clear understanding of this Gnostic realization of themselves the self-realized self-knowing that comes with a Taoist path of, you know, pursuing the internal alchemy, pursuing um, a deeper relationship and knowing with the universe. And so they start to look around and they start looking for people like myself that can give them a little bit more information about the specific, like, way to look at things. And I think that's why religion or belief systems in of itself, a, a fantastic for, for a gateway or entry to that very knowing is what resonates with you. Well, how do you feel when someone says something about something and, you know, human beings contract and expand all the time? That's basically the, the very validation of the present moment is, is it making you feel expansive or, or contracting? Mm. And generally speaking, someone would refer to and reflect to that as a duality uh, in the sense that a contraction is potentially um, a negative, has a, a negative connotation. But the reality is, is, you know, I mean, it, it really, when you look at something, are you dilating or contracting? That would in of itself would say you're getting more of something or less of something, which in turn is a basic understanding of a Taoist path, which is a bellows. Basically, we, we reflect on the mother of all things, the Tao, as a bellows, we refer to that as the nature of reality being everything is contracting, expanding at the same time. There is no, no end or beginning. You're all things and nothing right now. And so when you do that, you, you, you fall back on the simplicity of the dualistic uh, perception of is the glass half empty or full? And then when you see that, then you go, oh, okay, well, today it's half empty, tomorrow it's half full, and I can meet right in the middle, which is what we call the center point, the Wu Ji, the stillness. That's when you access the now. That's when you access the present moment. And then, of course, magical things take place, and then they start recalling this repetition of, I had this glimpse, I heard this voice, I saw this apparition, I spoke to my loved ones, I had this mystical synchronicity, this serendipity of, um, you know, I, I thought about something and then it was created, uh, had a manifestation, a physical healing, a mental, emotional, spiritual sort of state. And so this is sort of the, the gateway, the opener for anybody. And that's why I feel like a lot of people gravitate to Taoism when they realize, oh, my goodness, it's, it can be a philosophy, it can be a religion, it can be whatever you want it to be. And it helps reinforce and fortify your knowing of returning to who you really are. And so then that brings forth the entree to the question you asked about the Way 126. The Way 126 is uh, sort of like my digital offering of a Taoist seeker's path. And it basically has this integrated um, processes that you go through, a visual audible experience evoking a kinesthetic charge that validates the very uh, experience that you're having as being real, 
working deep with the physical nature of the human being, using the nervous system as a, as a tuning fork. And by doing this, you start to then dial in the energy centers of your physical body, which is basically the energetic infrastructure of who you are and more in a simplistic uh, viewpoint of anything from, you know, uh, you know, the Torah to, you know, uh, Kabbalah uh, realization to uh, Gnosism to Hinduism to, um, you know, basic yogic principles using the energetic uh, um, infrastructure that someone would be more familiar with, like a chakra uh, within Taoism, we call it a um, uh, a dantian, which is what we call it, that means energy uh, field. And we go deep into what we call the nidan, which is the energy, uh, the internal alchemy. And from that internal alchemy, we generate nigong, which is internal power. And so when you start to fortify these things, it starts to parallel. And I think I spoke on this before with our last conversation, but there's an incredible uh, profound incantation that we use from one of my teachers, the Jade Emperor, and it's as simplistic as this. A power abundant in its giving you will receive, unifying the body with the spirit, the spirit with the energy, bringing heaven to earth, transcending all is one, one is all, revealing perfection manifest. That is your gift, that is your offering. That is your gift that is your offering, that is your gift, that is your offering. And from within that resonance that you experience, this visceral feeling from the words, this linguistic sort of seed of awakening that comes from the person listening or receiving this um, transmission, you get this sort of like visceral sort of percolation of, well, what is it? The words are just making me feel something. I'm feeling something. I have this knowing that this is true to me. And this brings us back to, you know, understanding the mirroring effect of all things, which uh, from, say, a comedic hermetic principle, uh, everything is mental. The idea that all is one, one is all, as above, so below, this type of concept where, you are a macro or a micro of a macro, a macro of a micro. You are the universe, the universe is you. And, and in turn, you get these sort of expressions of that. You create turbulence, or as my dear friend Martin, a Buddhist monk, would say, the dukkha. Create the dukkha within you, which is the emotional content. And that creates a, a sort of an irregular sort of a stagnant um, uh congestion within your universe. And as you regulate the energy centers, you regulate your emotions from regulating your emotions, you create harmony within your universe. And that universe will flow, that universe will become what we call wu, the Wu way, which is the effortless action that is the flow, which most people are familiar with within a Taoist path of yin and yang. Basically, just you are done by the Tao, as my dear friend E from Y Dharma channel would say. I'm That's done right. by the Tao. I'm done. Does that answer your question? Well, the yeah. digital format from the Way 126 is very, it's a very profound experience because you can be John Smith from McDonald's cleaning toilets, or you can be the Dal Dalai Lama because of the material. It's a visual audible experience. It creates that kinesthetic visceral response that you and I are feeling now. We're still feeling the amplitude. We're speaking on it. We can express it visually like that charge we got right now. It's here. It's this present moment. Mm -hmm. And by having that experience and sharing in that, because you are me, I am you, this is where you can really start to see a significant shift in the seeker's um, lens. And once you regulate the energy centers, it's really it's really profound because you start to have a repeatable, repeatable experience that can be self-evident and self-regulated by the seeker mm -hmm. and not by relying on a third party or someone outside of your experience. And this is where we talk about the dialogue and the monologue. And the dialogue is something that you would have with um, a facet of this consciousness within Taoism. We call it perfection. The diamond is perfection manifest. 
and you look through the facet, giving yourself another insight into your reality. And so that information then is revealed, whether you're having a dialogue with your spirit, whether you're having a dialogue with um, yourself, and then ultimately you want to uh, 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 ascend to a, a monologue where you are the now. You're not a place, person, or thing. You are the present moment, which then gives you the attainment to access instant manifestation, magic, healing. All this takes place as we speak. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, as we speak. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I've never heard it put that way. It goes from a dialogue to a monologue. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. so succinct and very powerful. Yeah, man. Um, I also like what you said on how once you start to regulate the energy centers, you get to a point where it's a repeatable experience, um, as in it's like a science, you know? Uh, Sri yeah. Yukteswar would call it the holy science. The path of yoga, I do see it as a science, sort of like a trial and error process. And uh, once you get it down, uh, yeah, it's just simple to do, may not be exactly easy to do, but quite simple. Once one taps into this force, you could say it's quite simple. Like you just, you just know how to go about it and then you, you just work with it, you know, and it works with you. It's the same thing. And uh, yeah, it's quite powerful once that becomes um, apparent in one's life. But um, on that note, let me ask you this one. What are the practices in the Taoist in the, in the Taoist way of life that allow us to tap into these energy centers throughout our body? How do we hone in? Oh, right. Great, great question. Mm -hmm. So first you, you start to identify with the simplicity of what it is that you're experiencing. And first and foremost is realizing that your emotions don't control you, you control your emotions. And so this is a, a, a distraction for most people that, start with this self-realization is, hang on a second, I'm being sort of pulled in all different types of directions in the course of my day. I feel this way. I think that way I'm having this physical experience that is dictating what is taking place for me. Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I happy? Am I depressed? These are all turbulent sort of expressions of your universe that will dictate how, how dilated your lens is or how, how contracted it is. And so um, you start with a, a simplicity directly from Latsu. Latsu always reminds us when you um, first point of consciousness is being accountable for your behavior. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the delusion is, you know, I'm a good person. You look in the mirror and it's kind of like something out of like if, if anyone's ever seen Taxi Driver with uh, Robert De Niro, he's reciting his lines and he looks in, he turns around and looks at the mirror and goes, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? And he just keeps repeating it until he gets this sort of like self-realized confidence that I can deliver this, this attitude, this, this expression of who I am. For the now. Now, this comes in all forms. You have to be able to realize that your emotions are these, this, this contracting and expanding that we spoke of earlier within Taoism, when we speak of it as the bellows. And so a bellows just contracts and expands. It's abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite. And what we remind people of, the bellows is the mother, but man is not like that. And so people are like, well, hang on a second, I'm man. What do you what, what what exactly does that mean? Well, from a physicality perspective, you are perceiving yourself the I the reflection of the identity of who looks back at you in the mirror as being you. Now, when we say this, we always remind people it's like life is like a bellows, it contracts and expands at the same time. You're all things and nothing at the same time. Man is not like that. So the first point of action is to realize that mortality is real, that this human expression has a, a, a cycle of this contracting and expanding. Now, the more you step away from it and within a Taoist path directly from one of my teachers, Jade Emperor, he reminds you, when you know you are not of this body, you believe you are not of this body, what can harm you? 
Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Not even death. Not even death. And so this is a huge epiphany for most people when they truly accept that and they have this shift, just as we had this visceral experience right now, through that peak of that incantation, it's visceral. You can feel it, that chill you can feel right now. That expansive feeling is the now. And so one of the first things as a seeker is to first identify the emotional content, then through the practices that we uh, or myself teach you. Hang on a second. I don't know who that is. Quick Excuse me. I apologize for that. <laughs> okay. And th through the um, the seeker, you find this um, the, the techniques that we use is identifying a thought, feeling, and an emotion. And this is basically the secret source in the ingredients of all things in your reality. That's it. That's everything. People are like, Ah, oh, I never thought about it like that really is it. That's that's it. Thought, feeling, and emotion, and they come in that form. So it's a seed. So you're expressing that. You cannot escape it. You can go to the past, the future, the now. It's a thought. It has an emotional content, and with that, it has a feeling. And that's where people are like, isn't feelings and emotions the same? No, they're actually quite separate. And if you get right down to the the digital fraction of a second, you can see the energetic profiles shift from the emotion to the feeling. The emotion evokes a feeling. And so, hang on a second. Well, isn't that what an anger is? What? Anger is I'm angry. Yes. And that generates that feeling that doesn't make you feel good. It's like, okay. Oh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Oh, okay. And so part of being a seeker is you want to acquire this understanding that all events are a thought, feeling, and emotion. You want to extract the emotion and the feeling from the event, and the, the actual thought can be recognized as wisdom, and you can recall on it without it obstructing your perception. And so people always get carried away. It's like, oh, you triggered me. You're ang I'm, you made me angry. Well, of course, any deeper that you look into your own path, you, you come to understand, and most people do, is through their own self-evidence that emotions are really coming from an expression of where you are at at your own journey of realization. And that comes through your own belief system. It may be on a Taoist path, maybe on a path of uh, 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 a, a Hindu path, a Jewish path, a, a, a Islam path, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you will find your own knowing and that this expression, these emotions are a distraction. And so then we get back to, okay, so from, from your question, what's a, what, what are some of the techniques? Well, it always starts with a thought, feeling, and emotion, and then we use Nigong, which is internal power derived from our Nidan, which is internal alchemy. And there is just systems of energetics, which in my opinion, even though I sound like a fanboy and I'm biased being a Taoist priest, they're second to none in my opinion. And I really appreciate and, and nurture the value of all things and nothing is greater or lesser than anything else as we go back to the understanding that everything is contracting, expanding at the same time. Yet I have yet to find the inner workings of this power to, to the degree that Taoists go to and an understanding of those mechanisms in any other platform. The closest I've ever seen it would be a Rosicrucian sort of like admission from what I've seen through their own uh, exploration and realization. There's some really nuggets within that path that could parallel a Taoist alchemy path. Yet Taoist alchemy goes even deeper. And with that said, you know, by getting the fundamentals, understanding the energetic profiles in great detail, you can really master your experience and be able to just basically be the present moment. And you can take your emotional content. I, I highly recommend people don't erase their emotions. I, I mean, erase their personality because the personality is something that was given to you as part of this incarnation. You just need to be able to switch it on and off at will. 
That means that the more you stay in this state of default, which is the selflessness that comes with your regulation of the energy, so your effortless action, your Wu Wei within your universe is fluid, as we recall, all rivers return back to the ocean, the mother, that realization will give you this harmony. Your default is to be selfless. Your default is to be in service. And then a lot of people are like, Jifu, but I don't want to. I, I want to do the alcohol. I need to work on myself first. And, and, and then I'll get to that. I'm like, I, th- I think you're missing the point. And they're like, what are you talking about? I want, to, I want to master the alchemy and then I'll get into what happens is when you are in service of others, you are in service of yourself. And they go, whoa, 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 mind blown because you are me, I am you. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, if you're saying it like that, then let's get right down to the, let's get right down with the get down. And I'm like, absolutely. Because the more and more you, reveal the true nature of who you are, being this selfless being of service to others, i.e., because you are uh, occupying planet Earth with this physical flesh as an anchor to this uh, planet, you are an ambassador to planet Earth. Just like any other planet throughout the universe, if you look deeper, there are communities of all different types of beings that are doing the same thing that we are, We're operating within this incredible gift from the Tao. And by doing that, they are enriching their own experience. And by enriching your own experience, by collectively supporting the spiritual consciousness of humanity, in this case, planet Earth, in this case, the avatar that is handed to you as a seeker is the consciousness expressing itself through your very now by cultivating that, you will return to that nature and it will be selfless. You will not have to think. It always returns back to the simplicity of if you're thinking, you're not knowing. If you're knowing, you're feeling. And it always returns to that feeling state. So the, the, no matter what your development of your clear senses are, you will have a deeper understanding of the feeling, which then can be reflected on contracting and expanding. So on a deep, deeper cultivational practice of now, it starts with identifying your emotions, realizing, realizing your emotions are a distraction and to regulate them, to elevate and basically level your spiritual consciousness By regulating your energy centers, you regulate your emotional content. By regulating your emotional content, you create this harmony within your universe, which creates the Wu Wei, the effortless action, and all of a sudden it's good to be you. Mm -hmm. It becomes extremely effortless. And the more you and I are contributing to the, the, the betterment of humanity and the spiritual consciousness, by raising that, more and more people will remember who they are. More and more people will return to the true nature of that. And with that, we will create this incredible, um, uh, you know, nurturing of planet Earth as it should be. It's a gift from the Tao, Mm -hmm. an incredible, um, blissful place to be. It's not as distorted and as twisted as everyone would like to perceive it as. And uh, that comes from your own realization and by helping people understand that through these energetic practices, they level up very quickly. And um, you could consider that um, lucky to be you, mm. which is just perception. Yeah. Wow. That was um, very well said. That's, yeah, that was a really good answer, man. I feel the same way that once one does refine their energy centers, gets a little more self-realized, you could say that there does come about some sort of obligatory servitude, some sense of selflessness that just comes about not in spite of the personality, through the personality. We use the personality. The Tao, you could say, uses the personality. They become one. And in that creates a harmonious servant in the personality structure. I feel that, man. And I think that is just, that is the way. The way is the way. And that way is toward, you could say, loving, compassionate, cooperative, uh, just helping out a little bit. 
there's a lot of different labels, but it's just uh, becoming a better person, maybe you could just say. And that ultimately, if we all do that in our own accord, does lead to a better world. 100%. It's like, how else could it lead to? I mean, it's not going to lead to a worse world. Uh, and I think that's really what's going on here. I think that's what the path is all about. Whether the path, the path is Taoist, Christian, yogic, uh, it's all the same way. And it's all a way of betterment for this holy planet Earth that we seem to be incarnated on. And it's not just for this lifetime, it's for future lifetimes as well. That's really what this whole thing is about, man. It's be, we're just becoming better servants and creating better lives for future lifetimes. And uh, yeah, I'd, I don't know. If, what else could it be about? <laughs> it's like it, it becomes apparent and obvious, right? Like in through that um, inherent wisdom that we tap into, it's like, oh, of course, that's what we're doing. I like to say in a Christian sense, we're building the kingdom of heaven. We're the builders of the kingdom of heaven. And uh, yeah, that may seem grandiose and lofty, but I think that's what's going on here, folks. <laughs> but I think you mentioned it. Uh, that's kind of contrary to popular belief. You know, if you turn on the news, it doesn't really seem like that, right? But behind the scenes, really what's going on here is we are building just some sort of heavenly realm, a gift from the Tao. Like you said, I like that. I've never heard that before. A gift from the Tao. A gift from God, you could say. You don't have to say God, but just like a gift, a miracle. We're building this miracle together. Not only are we the miracle, we're, we're like building ever more novelty upon the miracle that we are. It's such, and that's, the, that's even more miraculous. It's like that we get to take part in this miracle through some kind of divine creativity that has been... Um, invoked within us and yeah hallelujah it's quite beautiful man i feel it for sure so on the note of practices i guess let's kind of take it down a notch would you say you kind of outline the theory of practice and where it leads to right now what does this look like in a physical sense would you say like meditation some sort of tai chi qigong uh, some kind of asana yoga practice or things of the like? Like, do we have to eat well? Like, what does it actually look like in someone's life to bring this about? That's a great question. Um, you know, when you become the maestro, the master of your 50 trillion cells that are represented as your physicality, you get to access the 0 0.07 millivolts of electricity that are potential, potential of what could be. And when you harness that, all of a sudden you can transmute it into anything and everything that you could imagine. And so it's only limited by your imagination. So doing sort of things that are, would seem superhuman become, you know, part of the expression of who you are, physical healing, mental, emotional, spiritual healing, all of these things are now potential as you continue to connect the dots. And so when you say, oh, do you need to eat well? Is there certain exercises? I always tell people, you know, um, within, you know, developing what in some uh, practices of, of internal alchemy, they would call it the substance, developing the substance, the Fajin substance that comes with the path of uh, the Taoist cultivator. We just call it chi energy, you know, prana, this is the thing that um, is basically the seed of all action and inaction within this duality. Without it, it's null and void, non-existent, mm -hmm. and that's not possible because everything is contracting and expanding all at the same time. So when you eat certain things, it all starts from the seed of your perception. So if you're subject to duality, which is a starting point, which you step off and realize that these are polarizing effects of the 3D reality, if we want to speak on it as a uh, dimensional shift, more from a physics perspective, let's just call it a dimensional shift. If we're in a 3D reality to observe that, you're already in the 4D. That means that time and space 
can be optional. And for you to step over to what they would consider the fifth dimension, you're now null and void of time and space and all bits are off. And now all of a sudden, the mastery of Ni Gong, the internal power, is to be able to operate in all dimensions at once. And people, uh, most of the questions are, well, what more, my, my goodness, what would happen? Well, the self-evidence of that is the ability to transmute a physical manifestation like a healing. This is the evidence that you need as a human to validate the skepticism of what some psychologists would consider a heteroaction. As a human being, whatever you start, you must finish. It's the, it's the simple framework of the human condition. And this is where you start. And then you realize you are not of this body, as we spoke of earlier. You are all things and nothing at the same time. And the only way to make that like a realization is to be able to cultivate the energetic potential so that when you put your attention intention to things, you're altering this 3D reality. And I like to get people to start with simple things like um, as you cultivate the substance, as we call the chi, you um, have a direct line of channeling that and, and transmuting that energy through this vehicle. And we use the energy centers, the Dantians, to do that very separating and merging of electromagnetic potential within this spectrum. And when you're able to do that, when you put your attention and intention to something, you'll watch it materialize. So a simplistic method would be taking some candles, preferably as a Taoist, you would use a red candle, and you light the candles and you have two flames and you move your eyes between the flames and watch the flames start to dictate the very attention intention that you have, which will then start to be measured the palpability of the transmission of that energy through this lens, what we call the Shen, which is really the spirit projection, the third eye projection within Taoism. And so that spirit power will be admitted through this channel. The Bai Hui is the top. The energy comes down from the Bai Hui through these channels. Now, we have nine eyes within this upper Dantian, not uh, a third eye or two eyes and an eye. We have nine eyes. And people are like, what in Tao's name does that mean, Jafu? Well, that's a hell of a lot more of the deeper alchemy. But just to give you a taste, when when we mention that, it instantly has a visceral effect on, on the 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 recipient. They're like, that is crazy, but it makes sense to me. And so by channeling this energy through these, these clear pathways, you can transmute the energy. So when you're looking at a flame, you can cultivate it, draw the energy down to the lower dantian and start to pump it out as you would just like um, water from a faucet. And the more you focus your attention on one flame and then go to the other, you will notice a shift as your eyes focus on one flame, it will start to flicker. You go to the other, it will start to flicker. This becomes a self-evident realization of what you're transmitting. You're altering this 3D reality with the transmutation of that energy through your attention and intention. And as you continue to cultivate it and you build these dantians, you fortify them, the, the substance, the chi becomes palpable. And it becomes very dense. And so now you're able to really be at one with the present moment. You're able to transmute the energy. You're not using the energy from your physical body, right? So this is a trap that most seekers start with. Whether you're, I get this from so many different people, whether you're an attorney, whether you're a judge, whether you're Dalai Lama, whether you're a janitor at, at McDonald's, whether you're a healer, a Reiki master, a massage therapist, a, a Qigong practitioner, um, a, an acupuncturist, a Chinese medicine doctor, everything has a price. And what does that mean? Well, your attention intention will siphon your very life force no matter what you're doing. So if you are, are not in a level of development where you can contain that and nourish the physical body, when you, you know, the old expression, whatever you do, you give it 100%, you give it your all, is not just an expression. You're literally handing over your life force through whatever endeavors you're into until you're able to contain that energy so you're not drawing from 
your physical body. So when you come into this world from a Taoist perspective, you have a constitution, what we call the Jing, which is the the essence of who you are. And it starts, I use the um, understanding analogy of, of a battery. You're given a battery. The battery normally, I've never seen a 100% battery. So when someone comes into this world, they're normally about 80%. And then through the practices of, of the Taoist seeker, I teach you how to nourish that, bring your battery up to 100%. From 100, you go to 1,000. From 1,000, you go to 9,000, being the highest Numero- num- numerology point of access, nine is the highest point for a Taoist. And we refer back to the simplicity of the cycle of life. Isn't it interesting how it takes nine months from conception to birth for a human to be created, which then we reference back as a Taoist seeker to the creation of the universe. And then we look at cosmos through those three cycles, through what we call the three pure ones that reveal that supreme purity, J purity, highest purity are the keepers of the cosmos and the creation of the cosmos. Yeah, that shift that you and I just had, that aha moment, that chill is one of those visceral moments. It's like, it's now. It's, it's like, I don't know what San Ching is saying, but it makes sense to me. I feel it. It's mm. like, I don't have to read a book. I don't have to go and do anything. I know this is true, and I think this is really powerful when people start to understand how how easily, intuitively, they're getting these, what some people might perceive as a paranormal sort of phenomenon, which is not really that at all. It's actually quite the contrary. It's, it's a very normal process as you start to realize you are an intuitive being, and that's how you... You're able to filter through your experience of being in the present moment is this intuitive sense, this intuitive knowing. And so when you saturate that, um, most what the, the initial effects for most people, I find, especially healers, light workers, Reiki people, Qigong, they're like, oh, my goodness, I had no idea I was basically almost like that old expression, selling my soul. You were handing off pieces of yourself through every healing experience, every moment, and they'd be like, I'm exhausted after a massage. I'm exhausted after doing this healing on someone. I'm exhausted after channeling this uh, spirit because you haven't been able to fortify this container and take it from the mother and realize you are the mother. When you are the mother, the mother is abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite. There is no end. There is no beginning. And so you then move and shift from the man, the human being, to the bellows. And then you are the present moment contracting and expanding. Or you are everything and nothing at the same time. And that really comes from that self-realized energetic profile, energetic construction. And that's why it's really important to to go through the process of developing those skills, awakening what's already within you. It's like when when I share things with people or teach people, it's a different type of experience for them because I'm not asking you to to imagine. It's actually already there. All I do is open a gateway to what you already know and you experience it and go, holy moly, I was feeling that before you even said it because it's not a figment of your imagination. This stuff is here. Your your spectrum, your electromagnetic spectrum that you visually are seeing is just a minuscule amount of what the potential is. And when we switch that on, all of a sudden you're seeing 99% of what the rest of the world cannot see due to your own development, through your own energetics, your own skill set that you are mastering yourself. That's why the energetic potential is so, in my opinion, the be-all or end-all for any seeker. You must master that potential that you have so that you can optimize this present moment and this consciousness that you are being reminded you are. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it leaves me feeling unlimited potential. That's the beauty of it. Unlimited potential. It's um, quite the opposite of the popular paradigm that we live under, which is scarcity, limits, 
very, very shallow and false ideas of who we are or who we should be. And then once one taps into this, man, it's, uh, yeah, quite unlimited. I don't know any other word to use. Yeah, it's very powerful, man. And it's not like unlimited as in um, you can do whatever you want, God mode in a video game. You know what I'm talking about? Where you could just you have these superpowers. In a way, you could say you get superpowers and you, you do start to transmutate the energy. But it's still within the limits of the personality. You know what I mean? It's like there's still limits. But how the limits um, work their way out, how the limits sort of move through the Shakti energy seem a little bit limitless. They seem to, like, if there's like a decision tree of our personality, through tapping into oneself, through self-realization, clearing the energy centers, the branches of the tree of how we can take our life expand you know like they expand in ways that we could even imagine before if we just stayed in this simple scarcity mindset you understand the um the visualization i'm trying to draw as like uh just just more choices that can be made more freedom it's not like you don't become god but you do start to tap into a God essence, <laughs> you know, you start to use one's free will uh, a little more according to this said Tao, and it feels limitless at least, uh, limitless in in our limits, despite the limits, despite suffering, you could say. It's quite freeing and quite liberating, and um, really the essence is just creativity, right? Would you say from this springs forth the spark of creativity, um, art, you could say, that comes from this eternal present moment. Like it's just an art form of one's life that we paint as we go. And uh, yeah, would you say, I mean, that's the question, would you say it's like an art form in some kind of way, the art of living from living in the Tao, living as the Tao? (laughs) <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely yeah. i mean it's um again right back to the bellows I'll, I'll always remind people of understanding that the 81 verses within the Tao Te ching which we refer to as the magical register is basically the roadmap for you to remind yourself from beginning to end the very simplicity of that all is now and all is nothing at the same time, and that means creation. And Mm -hmm. so when you perceive things at your lowest, you're really at your highest, always. Wait, what do you mean by that? When you perceive things at your lowest, you're really at your highest. You're really at your highest as the bellows. As you are contracting, you are expanding at the same time. So your perception of limitation is the true truth is you are unlimited. So that moment that you see the glass half empty is really half full. Uh huh. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Like when people say um, samsara is actually nirvana, they're one in the same yin, yang, light and dark. I know mm. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So in terms of duality, we have to recognize our limits in order to recognize our limitlessness. Bingo. Yeah. Yes. Uh And that's the dualistic uh, nature of the polarizing effects of the electromagnetic spectrum is the contracting and expanding. Mm -hmm. Once you get the rhythm and you're in the the flow Mm -hmm. and you truly are wu-wei, effortless action, effortless effort, all of a sudden, you you do nothing and you do everything at the same time. So the new age version of, you know, I want to give you the motivation to find yourself, to manifest things, you must take action, is completely contradictory of 
the Taoist way of knowing, which is you do nothing and everything is revealed, everything it takes place. And that only comes from, from a deep nature of mastery of the energetic profiles. Mm -hmm. And you, you will not, because there's this, you, you can shift into these states from a, a physics perspective. These dimensional shifts are, are palpable, and you know there's a knowing that comes with that. And so there's no room for um, a distortion or dukkha when you are able to access that energetic profile. You can, I'm here. And then the self-evident realization is, the bypro the byproduct, the effect of that present moment will come in the form of a manifestation, magic, healing, and you will be able to experience it. Someone will be like, that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? A physical healing, a mental, emotional healing. These are evidence of perfection. And you return back to that as the mother. So that altered distortion that comes with your attention and intention, altering things that become objects, that become a different energy from the perfection, that energy has a vibration. That vibration has a frequency. That frequency, if met, the resonance will be equal to a greater than, and it will be realized, which is basically the premise of a lot of people that mention manifestation is if you can hold that resonance, then you can realize it within your reality, mm. which in turn, in, in the practices of Taoism is very fundamentally true. It's being able to replicate, rep a repeatable, replicable sort of like state. When you can do that, all bets are off. <laughs> it's the now. It's the very moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and get a true sense of power. And not power in the classical colloquial sense. Of like, ego. Yeah, but exactly. The power of the mother. Yeah, yeah. the mother. That's actually the note I was going to ask you about. When you say the mother, do you mean like, um, actually, let me tackle it like this. What is the father? Well, it's a polarizing effect. The mother is the father. The father is the mother. <laughs> yeah. But understanding that that present moment from conception to creation, the seed comes from that in energy. To go to the yang, you must return to the yin. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So this, yeah. So you're saying like um, this ultimate potential point would be the father? In a conceptual format, like the father is this point that we reference as in that you can tap into. Mm -hmm. Unlimited potential energy and a physics potential energy, I guess, and then kinetic energy would be the mother, right? Potential mm -hmm. and then kinetic. Shiva, Shakti, Purusha, Prakriti. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like stillness motion, right? Yes. Very simplistic explanations here, but that's kind of the but essence. Even, yeah, in essence, but there's actually that moment, that center point between those two mm -hmm. that you access all things. That's the key. That's the way. Yeah. 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 That's the way. Uh-huh. Yes. Hmm. The middle way. <laughs> <laughs> Your yeah. way. My way. The yeah, only yeah. way. Yeah, that's what's interesting, right? Is it's the way. The way is the way is the way. Yet it manifests in its own unique flavor in all of our lives. In yes. you know how it looks on an outside point of view is different for me and you and the listener and Jesus and Buddha and Lao Tzu. It has, it has its own unique flavor. Although I do feel as though there is this commonality, there is a sharing between how the flavor comes about. And I think we spoke about it in the beginning through selflessness, cooperation, servitude. But we all serve in our own way. So that's some sort of dance. I feel that we all have to. We have to. We all have to find our own way to dance to the same tune <laughs> you know it's all the same song but we dance to it in our own way i guess is uh maybe a crude metaphor that i just came up with but i like it 
Wow. Uh, yeah. You feel that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You do. You Well, I mean, that brings us back to the, the nature of yin and yang. It's all merged as one. And mm-hmm. you can identify within this dualistic experience in all ways, in all forms. And you can find that center point in anything. Everything has that center point of creation. Yeah. And when you tap into that, you will feel it. Once you enter it, it becomes this visceral thing. Mm. And it becomes that knowing. Whether it's a word, whether it's an event, whether it's a place, person, or thing, you can enter the center point. Mm. Now, do you feel that nature and animals and the whole cosmos altogether is just more naturally aligned with the way in us pesky humans we lose ourselves from the uh the realization of said way and that's what sort of makes us unique at least from how we can um, observe other life forms it seems like we can sort of resist the way right like a tree can't really resist other life forms seems to be that, that seem to be lower than us are subject to the way, but we can resist it. I wouldn't recommend resisting it. <laughs> I don't think it's a, it's a good thing per se, but we can. We can resist it all we want and try to um, pave our own way, you could say. In a Christian sense, that's what uh, Lucifer could be said to have done. He's, uh, he thought he was God, so he tried to create his own way along the way. Um, so yeah, would you say that is like uh, what makes us different is that we can go against this innate divinity and uh, I guess free will. We have a, a sense of free will. Is that what makes us unique in that way? Well, yes and no. There's like this this misconception or misdirection of the idea. I mean, literally the expression of human condition is the true nature of Taoism. Taoism mm. is a misdirection. The, 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 you go three steps to the side, four steps forward, five steps backwards. You will not reveal the truth unless you access this present moment. And so it's that, that, that mind puzzle of the human condition that gives us this sort of like, uh, um, you know, moment to pause and you as you as you so so eloquently said where you know we have this free will option which is really sort of like a spatter in the works of of the human you know realization of this present moment and by giving you this option you can sort of be distracted but also you're gathering this incarnation of gathering the consciousness, the ability to now level up the human experience, have a greater understanding of that, and then filtering through the emotions, you know, redefine what love is, what is love, and love is subjective until otherwise noted. It's sort of like a jump-off point to the, the truth of the seeker is you start with a subjective hallmark love version, and then you, as you gather through gratitude as a Taoist would use gratitude as the sec- next level, you obtain the essence of all things being one with everything, that you are all things and nothing at the same time, then your love becomes the default of this universal selflessness. But initially, you will be subject to it. It will be a limited perception because it's just the sum of your life experiences. So as a human being, it's almost like, well, why is that? Why do we get that option where a tree doesn't have that option? Why are we given that option? What's the inner secret to this human condition? And, you know, it's just, it's a refresher, a reminder of what we talk about, which is the bellows. It's like that secret source, that entry level. It's like the Death Star moment in Star Wars as Luke enters the Death Star. He has one moment to hit that fatal point where it's blammo, and that's that center point that we speak of. 
And when you refer to it, you create the simplicity of realizing everything has a center point and the energetic potential of that, because everything is energy, frequency, and vibration, then all of a sudden, oh, this is not a puzzle anymore. Now, as Latsu has referred to this, when people ask him about the complexity of life, he refers to imagine yourself like a grain of sand, asking the beach, what are we doing today? fall back into the beach and be realized. And that's that moment. That's that. Hang on a second. It's all about me. No, it's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. And so that dance is the subject of polarity within a dualistic perception. And the trick, the trick, the deciphering puzzle, the elementary, my dear Watson moment is realizing now is all you have and that's it and through that increases your lens and so the distraction is oh you have free will we're fighting the inevitable you're fighting all things and nothing at the same time and that's when you find the now and that's when everything is effortless everything is this expression as the mother the now and so humans are, are the, the, the construct of that is to be in your head, to be separated, to be in the intellect, to be considered you are separate from the universal realization we are all. You are me, I am you, we are one. And that little Sherlock Holmes moment is when everything becomes realized. And then that resonance levels up. You and I share it with someone else. It levels up that person. That person levels up five other people. Those five other people level up 20 other people. Before you know it, we're living in this heaven on earth, mm-hmm. as we spoke of earlier. Mm-hmm. The, the idea conceptual to a lot, but lived by many. And more and more on a daily basis, we are coming to that realization in 2024. This, you can live it now, not from a transitioning perspective from one life to another, but this present moment can be realized. And then all of a sudden it's like, there's enough for everyone. Because if you realize that you are not man, that you are abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite, there is no end. There is no end. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. And so that humanistic ego is just the distraction to make you looking even deeper than it, than the present moment to decipher what you already know to be true. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is powerful stuff. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'm just imagining right now a world where everyone is synced up in this way. And you know what the thing is? It's not a fantasy. That's actually what's happening. We're all synced up to the Tao. And we're all going to be aware that we are synced up to the Tao. We are the Tao. And what a world that would look like in its manifestation, man. I I mean, first and foremost, I don't foresee any wars from that. (laughs) That might be step one of uh, realization of the Tao as we stop warring each other. And just other, our internal conflicts, our external conflicts. And yeah, man, truly heaven on earth i don't even think it would be comprehensible like i don't think i can actually picture it i think it is actually something like an alien world maybe something reminiscent of the idea of atlantis or lemuria but even greater than that a a whole world dedicated to each other essentially and dedicated to ascension evolution and love really what it's about love seeing each other all as one family not not just on this earth, throughout the cosmos. 
Man, that sounds like some hippie talk to somebody that has no idea what we're talking about, but it's the truth. It really is the truth. It's, uh, oh man, it's, uh, I can't even, can you imagine like what? I can't imagine. I really can't imagine, but it's, there's something in me like a pull that is pulling me toward this alternate world that isn't really alternate. It's actually natural. This natural way of living, this effortless living where we're all synced up in that way. And these times that we're in just be a thing of the past. It will just be like, it'll be needed. We'll probably see it as like a, a something that we needed to go through in order to grow. But it'll be like looking back at caveman times. It'll be like looking back at medieval Europe, like how we look at that now but probably even to a greater extent. It'll be um, like an alien world, like I said, something akin to Star Trek and Star Wars, but without the wars. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We shall see, I guess. We shall see. And uh, until then, all that matters is we tap in to the kingdom of heaven within, as uh, Jesus said. That's really all that matters. We tap in to ourselves, and then we bring it forth effortlessly and naturally. Um, in our lives, however that manifests, however that comes about. Now that seems great. I think we're, um, this is quite an advanced talk. That seems amazing, right? But on a personal standpoint, there's a lot of people that are suffering, right? We're, there's a lot of people that you could say are just really struggling with life right now. What is the personal incentive to tapping into this said Tao? You know, do you feel more peaceful, happy, joyful, blissful, just naturally from a, maybe a psychological standpoint? Do you just feel better having this realization and living as this realization um, in your life? Is this just like a, is this the only way to happiness? I guess is another way to ask it. Well, that's a, that's another great question. i I believe from my own natural realization, biologically, over the last 30 years, consciously remembering who I am, that there is no right or wrong way up the mountain from a Taoist perspective, and that there are a million ways to, to create this harmony that we speak of, this emotional content that you would consider happiness, joy, bliss. And so, you know, tapping into and returning to perfection, remembering who you are as this present moment creates simplicity. It creates mm. perfection. It leaves no space that cannot be obtained from a water perspective, the most profound element. You can access all things that man cannot by being now, by being this present moment. And so when you seep into the intellect, the intuition, you're still separate. To be the now means that you have no title, no place, no person, nothing. You are just now. And so with that, there is no stagnation. There is no limitation. There is no uh, distortion. It's just perfection and from that reveals what some people would consider this serendipitous uh, synchronicity that from a, from an observer's perspective would seem like you are the luckiest person on the face of the earth mm -hmm. yet you have just remembered who you are realizing that this present moment is all we have and by doing that things are returned to the Wu Ji the Wu Wei, the effortless action, the effortless, ex uh, effortless effort that comes with the stillness, which is happening right now, which returns us to everything's contracting and expanding. And so people always keep telling me, but Jiffy, you said that before, and I'm like, I'll say it again. And if you return to the scripture, the scripture reminds you 81 times. That's the simplicity of all things. When you understand this, you are all and nothing at the same time. By being all and nothing at the same time means it's good to be you. <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man, it's such a miracle. It really is, man. To tap into the moment. It's um Eureka. It's there's there's no words. There's no words. I could try and formulate some kind of eloquent sentence to put some kind of label on the miracle of the moment, but there are truly no words to the majesty of this realization, man. And it's like I wish I could give it to people, right? I wish there is some way that I could formulate my words where it would work. Well, it's not that easy. <laughs> we can only point the way. That's the thing is we can only sort of be a testament. We can definitely be guides. You know, we can definitely help others that want the help, but uh, we can't, there's no, there's no way to do it for anybody else. Unfortunately, you know, maybe that's fortunately, it depends how you look at it. But sometimes, you know, in my compassionate sense of being, I see others suffering and I wish, I wish, I wish I could do more, right? I wish I could do more. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, like I said, we can't, there's not, we all have to save ourselves, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We all have to save ourselves in order to uh, save the world as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, why do we do what we do? You know what I'm saying? What, why, do we, why are we on here on the mic? Why do we have our YouTube channels? Is this just like a giant testament, a reminder, a remembrance for anyone who tunes in that this is, this is real? Yeah. I mean, you, 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 what you must experience pain to receive pleasure, which would refer back to this present moment. And so for you to move past the condition of the human being to be now remembering is the essence of all things. So when you say a lot of people are having suffering, they're having, uh, you know, I always remind people emotions are the basically the, the lure or distraction because when you're emotional, you're suggestible. This is the distraction for you in this incarnation is being distracted by the emotional content and by listening to our conversation, you return back to that present moment mm. and you remember who you are through the dialogue, through us giving people a, a deeper understanding of just the construct of duality and what that means in a non-dualist perspective as that center point. Everything is the center. The center of all things is the now. And then, okay, we have this podcast. We have this conversation. And we remember what from remembering you are now expanding and expanding again and expanding again. And as you continue to expand, you expand more because, you know, people asked me this, this the other day in a podcast, someone asked me, what do you think of, you know, sexual practices and, you know, abstaining from sex and things of that nature? When you realize you are not of this body, the act of self-pleasure is the act of self, uh, basically, preservation. You are preserving the very essence of this moment, and you are cultivating it, and there is no end to it. So you do not contract, you expand. Yet there is this connotation that, you know, um, it's negative, which doesn't apply for from a Taoist secret perspective. Yet it is within the construct of duality that you would perceive things this way, which would be offered up to you as some type of negative contracting moment, if that's how you perceive things, which is the 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 puzzle that is given to you as the seeker, i.e. Sherlock and your Watson is that realization that the distraction is just the emotions, the human condition. We always refer to this as, I'm sure you're going to hear the, the um, conversation of, but he said that before because this is so simple that most people will dismiss the realization of this present moment and they can have this heaven on earth, this harmony, and it comes in a construct of what is perceived 
by you is the idea of God, Tao, Buddha, universe. It's been given to you because this is part of you as a conscious collective expanding, creating the creation, the co-creation of this incredible gift. Earth is heaven. Earth is heaven. It's not hell. Yet this is how it's perceived from a very limited suggestibility perspective because we're given this extra component, this idea that there is free will and that with that free will, you can be distracted. You can be taken from your path. And then the consciousness can be distracted and obtain this sort of very limited viewpoint, which is only temporary because it always returns. As the contracting and expanding takes place, I've had the, the, the very uh, incredible opportunity to transition dozens of people in this lifetime and witnessing the spirit leaving the physical body is that moment of realization and everyone has the same one. Oh, it's much brighter because it's just the beginning of a new story, a new page within this limitless book that you're given as a human being. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginning. And it's always just the beginning too. <laughs> and it's so funny that we say that because I've had students that have, have been on this conscious journey for, for many years. And they always, they always come back to me and they're like, Jifu, well, guess what? I think the energy couldn't get any more profound. It just got even greater. It never ends, as is the truth. The truth is this, but the distraction is you're being sold on the limitations of who you are, mm -hmm. and that comes in the form of the human condition, and that's part of the juxtaposed sort of like perception is I'm all and nothing at the same time. Hmm. Now, are you in your intuition or are you in your intellect? Are you merging the two to realize that this is the now? Or are you going down the path of deconstructing everything to a myopic level that distracts you for another year, five years, 10 years? And then they, you reflect on this very moment and go, I was there 10 years ago. Now. It's now. It's now. It always was now. It always will be now. It's the beauty of it. So beautiful um, that I really don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. <laughs> I get to points in the conversation where I, uh, I'm like, okay. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, seriously, that might be a good note to wrap this thing up at, to yeah. be honest. Um, do you have anything else you want to say, though? Oh, I just want to say that, you know, um, what we speak of today, what we share with the audience is a profound realization for any seeker. And they walk away from this conversation going, mind blown, this is what I was looking for. This is the next stage or chapter of my, my journey of remembering or returning to who I am. And so always pause for a moment. Know this is your red flag if you are a seeker, that you have to question anything because the selfless act of the present moment means there is no evidence of thought. If you are thinking, you are not knowing. If you're knowing, you are feeling. And so you do not have to go deeper. You do not have to understand the meaning of life. It's now, and you will feel it. And that's that part where people are like, this is so simple. I can't, it can't possibly be. Yeah. You try that on for size, and you experience that just as that expression I just mentioned. When you try it on, and you feel comfortable in remembering who you are, I promise you within 24 hours, within 48 hours, within 72 hours of 
embracing the, the nature of who you are, remembering who you are, your life will become absolutely effortless. And you will not understand how everything and anything that you could ever imagine with potential becomes realized in this present moment. Amen. Very well said. It's funny, the phrase you use, this is so simple, it can't possibly be. But yet, it be. <laughs> it be. Be here now, as they say. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. I think this, this was an awesome conversation. I thank you for coming on here and uh, sharing your time, effort, and wisdom with me and anybody that listens in the future. Um, that's it, man. I wish you all the best and keep doing your thing. This was, this was really special. And that's, I don't have anything else to say. So peace well, and love to you. Thank you, brother. I'm very grateful for you sharing this platform, for inviting me on your platform and just having this conversation where we get to share and, you know, help people remember who they really are. Amen. Helping me remember at least. <laughs> if not anybody else, you help me. So, yeah, on that note, that's it. Peace and love to you and peace and love to anybody that did listen this long. Goodbye.